the 19th of September 1991, a group of hikers walking in the Altsteler Alps came across a remarkable discovery. In the meltwaters of the Similon Glacier, at a height of 3,200 metres, was a dehydrated human corpse. The body was extremely well preserved, and within days researchers took it away to Innsbruck University. It was quickly clear that this was an ancient corpse, but what made it even more remarkable was that it had been found with items from everyday life. He was approximately 5 foot 2 inches tall. He had the appearance of a typical late Neolithic Italian or Swiss man, and owing to where he had been found, the researchers called him Ertzi, the Iceman. His teeth were worn down from a diet of coarse grain, and his hair had recently been cut before death. There was evidence of smoke in his lungs, probably from countless campfires, and also linear tattoos placed strategically around his body. Examination of his hands and nails revealed this man was accustomed to manual labour, and also that he had suffered from illness recently, which had affected his nail growth. Most exciting for the archaeologists, though, were the objects that he had been found with, chief amongst which was a copper axe, still hafted to its yew wood handle. Typically, the handle doesn't survive in the archaeology, so this was a unique opportunity to study how these axes had been made and used in everyday life. It had been found with a yew wood bow which was smeared with fat to maintain its spring and keep it moist against the cold, and in a deer skin quiver were 14 arrows of an extremely elegant and very advanced design. He was well prepared for the wilderness. He had a kit for making flint tools and a kit for starting fires, hung on a leather belt around his waist. He was also found with a knife, flint with a yew wood handle, which had been stored in a grass woven sheath. The knife had residue on it from cutting moss, which he had with him probably to use as toilet paper, but also for cutting the tinder that he needed to start fires in such a high altitude. In addition to these, his clothes were extremely well preserved. Notice here his shoes, with holes for laces, not unlike our own. Indeed, because of Ertzi, we know a lot about the Copper Age dress of this part of Europe. Leather leggings, grass cloak, fur cap, tanned hide jacket, and other items were securely dated to 3000 BC. All were well made, warm, and easily repairable. Despite this, archaeologists came to the conclusion that Ertzi had died from overexposure in the heights of the mountain. It was fascinating, but ultimately it was case closed. However, after advances in technology, in 2001, Ertzi was examined once more. A combination of CT scans and x-rays quickly revealed that he had actually had an arrowhead lodged in his shoulder blade. Remarkably, this had been missed, and along with a corresponding hole in Ertzi's skin, his cause of death became horrifically clear. Questions now abounded as to why people would want to shoot this man in the back, this apparent nomadic wanderer. Had he been shot by an enemy? Had he been shot in secret? Had he been mugged? Was it a war? Was he even a criminal on the run from people at the time? Whatever led to his demise and positioning in the mountains, he has become an internationally famous find, warranting extremely detailed reconstructions of his appearance in life. And what makes these reconstructions possible is that he's such a remarkable find. A normal person, with normal clothes and tools, preserved not through posterity, but because of the unique place where he died. For many, he is an icon of archaeology, and even Brad Pitt has a tattoo of Ertzi on his arm. But for archaeologists, Ertzi is not only a remarkable find, but also a reminder never to be too proud to revisit the conclusions that we make and examine them in the light of new and better techniques.